Today we canceled Darren Rovell, who is, I'm told by Wikipedia, a sports business analyst who previously worked for ESPN. Somehow this line of work has enabled him to amass an enormous social media following, two million on Twitter alone. But unfortunately for him, that enormous following only meant that there was a very large audience watching this week when he imploded like a dying star, creating a black hole of cringe so potent and powerful that it threatens to annihilate anything in its orbit. It all began when somebody on Twitter called uh, called Rovell racist. Now, not that it matters, but from what I can tell, the initial charge of racism came from some random account called Bob M with literally one follower. So Bob M with one follower argued that Rovell's stance against paying college athletes is racist because he is, quote, trying to cut off the only lifeline that some of the poor, underprivileged minority college athletes are able to get. Now, the issue of paying college athletes is contentious. There are reasonable positions to be held on either side of it. I happen to be in favor of it, only because otherwise the corrupt NCAA gets to keep all the money, profiting to the tune of billions while pretending that college athletics is amateur, which is a big joke. That's my opinion. You might have a different one. Your opinion is wrong if it's different, but, you know, it's not racist. So Ravel could have simply ignored Bob M with one follower, but instead he felt the need to defend himself. Sensing, I guess, an opening to virtue signal, Ravel responded, quote, calling me a racist is cute on this day especially. I have one of the largest Martin Luther King Jr. collections in the world, and some of my closest friends are black. Now, you may be wondering what a Martin Luther King Jr. collection is exactly. I mean, he's an historical figure, not a Pokemon. That's just one of the questions that arises from this tweet. Though he initially didn't seem eager to explain it, he deleted the tweet almost as quickly as he posted it, but it was too late. The internet had gotten a hold of it, and it was on its way to going viral. Ravel was mocked ruthlessly and deservedly, and he was also, shocker of shockers, accused of being racist for denying that he's racist. Now, you might think that, that Darren would now crawl away into a cave somewhere, hide there until all this blows over, protect whatever bit of his dignity remains, But you'd be wrong. He was not done humiliating himself. So later that day, he called into some sort of Miami Hurricanes fan broadcast and tried to further defend himself. What you're about to hear is um, very real. may sound like a comedy skit or maybe a deleted scene from The Office, but I assure you that this is real life. Listen. Explain it to to the fan base so everybody can get on the same page. Sure, I have I have uh, over nine MLK signed items. I am a humongous fan of what he's done, uh, and over the last seven years, I've collected a lot of things. Uh, it's not only MLK; it's a lot of Black history. I own a Rosa Parks uh, signed NAACP card, so it was pretty shocking today how I was called racist um, when. When I, I am a student and lover of Black history, and it was it was I never expected the reaction that I that I got today. Hmm. I'm so I'm sorry I'm sorry if people think that a white man can't enjoy Black history. All right. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I I I really am. It, I'm sorry if people think that a white man uh, can't. Uh, uh, love Martin Luther King. But to me, that seems pretty counterintuitive. Somehow, amid all of that, perhaps the funniest part to me is when he says of Martin Luther King, I'm a humongous fan of what he's done, which is the kind of thing you might say about a tight end when he goes over a thousand receiving yards on the season. And, And that was very funny, though maybe not as funny as bragging that you have a Rosa Parks trading card and I'm not impressed by that anyway, because uh, I have the Frederick Douglass rookie card and a signed limited edition Harriet Tubman jersey. My anti-racist credentials are far more impressive and, and worth more on Amazon, incidentally. Now, as mentioned, this self-defense strategy by Rovell not only led to mockery, laughter, and derision, all very well warranted, but also to further charges of racism. Deadspin ran an article with the headline, Darren Rovell is why white America needs to leave MLK Day alone. The article by Karan Phillips calls Rovell disgusting, a sadist, and demented for what you just heard there. It was suggested that he needs to, quote, take a CRT class, which I'm sure he'll be more than willing to do. Um, This is what he gets for showing off his anti-racist resume. And and this this is the lesson to take away from this. 
what's wrong with what Rovell said? Now, the popular view is that you shouldn't try to prove you aren't racist by saying you have black friends and that you appreciate black history because, according to this view, that only proves all the more so that you're racist. But that's ridiculous, of course. I mean, in fact, having black friends is compelling evidence that you're not racist against black people. Admiring Martin Luther King Jr. is another good piece of evidence. It's ridiculous to suggest that a man who despises black people would nonetheless surround himself with black people and look up to black historical figures as his personal heroes. So the problem with Rovell's attempt to prove he's not racist isn't that he's incorrect, but that he's trying to prove he's not racist. He is groveling before a mob of people who will hate him regardless. He's presenting evidence in the court of public opinion, even though the verdict has already been decided. Darren Rovell might be a cringy, self-important weirdo, but there's no reason to think he's racist. Unless you're the sort of person who thinks everybody with his skin pigmentation is racist. I mean, think about that article. It, it, it's, it's not an attack just on Darren Lovell, but he lumps in all white people. White America. Because we're all the same. In that case, there's no evidence that will ever convince you otherwise. And your opinion is irrelevant anyway. So why should anyone try to convince you of anything? Who cares what you think? These days, there are only two effective and worthwhile responses to the racism charge. One is to simply ignore it. And this is going to be the best course of action 95% of the time, especially when the accusation is coming from an anonymous account named Bob with one follower. The second option for the other 5% is to say to your accuser, I don't care that you think that. Your opinion means nothing to me. Your feelings are unimportant. I have no desire to be liked or respected by you. That's how completely irrelevant you are to me. Good day, sir. Now, you could put that into your own words, but that's the message. Under no circumstances should you ever make any sincere attempt to disprove the racism charge. The category of racism is so broad and defined in such an arbitrary and ad hoc way that it's, it's unfalsifiable. It cannot be disproven. And at any rate, the people who wield this hammer are lazy, manipulative bullies. By trying to prove anything to them, you've lowered yourself, not down to their level, but below it. You're now lying prostrate on the ground, kissing their feet and begging for mercy, which you will not receive. It's pathetic. It's embarrassing. Also kind of hilarious sometimes, as Darren Rovell demonstrates, which is why today he is finally canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.